G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at the final MMX stuff and this is also going to be a nice little segue into the wonderful world of SSE. Okay, so what we're going to do here is um, figure out how to get the remaining comparison instructions. Last shoot we looked at um, greater than and equals and that's actually all that MMX gives us. So we've got to make the rest ourselves. And to do that we need a few tricks. So two old tricks first of all. Um, to clear a register to all zeros, an MMX register that is, uh, same as x86, you just use exclusive or. So the MMX instruction there is PXOR and you use the same register for both operands. So if you want to clear MM0, you go PXOR, MM0, MM0. Alternatively, these all, all three of these do exactly the same thing. Uh, you can use P and NOT in the same register or you can use packed compare greater than bytes, words or dwords, it doesn't matter if you use the same register, um, nothing in uh, MMO is going to be greater than the same thing in MMO so it will be set to uh, zero anyway using exactly that same logic uh, the next trick uh, we set an MMX register to all ones so everything, if you use the same operand again this is um, everything compared to itself is equal so this ends up setting uh, the register to all ones. Packed to compare for equality. You can use bytes, words, or dwords. It doesn't matter. No difference at all. Uh, so long as you use the same register for both operands. Okay, a new trick to complement or flip each of the bits. Um, all you have to do is XOR, or you can use AND NOT with all ones. So you make sure that the second operand is all ones, and you're fine. Okay, so say we want to, for example, complement um, MM0, we've got to pick a temporary register. I usually use MM7 or MM6, some of these higher registers, but, um, you know, use whatever, whatever's free. So the first line just here, I've set that uh, temporary register, MM7, to all ones using the trick from the previous slide, and the next thing, PX or MM0, MM7, will effectively complement every single bit in MM0. All of the ones will become zeros, all of the zeros will become ones. Beautiful. Okay, so using those three, we can wrangle the remaining operators. Um, we've got greater than and equals to, thanks to Intel in the MMX instruction set. And using these, we can uh, figure out the rest. So all you have to do is think about what the remaining comparison operators mean in terms of greater than, equal to, uh, complementing and the boolean operations. So for instance greater than or equal to is literally greater than or equal to. So if we find greater than and we find equal to and we all the results together um, we'll effectively have the greater than or equal to operator. Is that pretty odd? Let's go through them all anyway. Okay so in the following examples I'm always comparing MMO and MM1 and I'm always comparing bytes, but uh, you can obviously swap the B on the end of the packed compare instructions for a W or a D if you happen to be comparing words or D words. Uh, I've used MM7 for a temporary space as usual. And directional comparisons are always signed, so that's the uh, GT comparisons. They're always signed, and that actually results in uh, all of the directional comparisons being signed, so less than, less than or equal to, they're always signed. Um, oh, and the other thing is, yeah, just be careful. So if if you just take exactly this code and drop it into yours, uh, it, it probably won't be that quick. Uh, it might be, I don't know. But this is just a, an example of um, the logic of how to make the uh, remaining comparison operators. Okay, the first one, equal to. This is nice and easy. MMX gives us an equal to. So if we want to find equals to in MMO and MM1, we just use packed compare equa B. Good stuff. Okay, not equal to. Uh, this is literally find equals to and then complement it. So packed compare for equality. Uh, MM0 and MM1 finds equals to. And then this is the complementing trick from the uh, a few slides back. Um, we set MM7 to all ones and packed exclusive or MM0 with this value to give us the complement of equals to or not equals to, in other words. Confusing. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> okay, packed compare for greater than bytes. All right. Um, yeah, Intel was kind enough to give us a greater than, so this one's easy as well. 
moving right along, um, greater than or equal to. Okay, so here's the one where we find greater than, then we find equals to, then we all both the results together. So in order to do that, we need to make um, a copy of the values from MMO and stick them in MM7 or whichever register you're using. And that's what I do in the first line. Then the second line, we find greater than, store that in MMO. Then we find equal to, store that in MM7. And we all both of those results together. So MMO just here will end up with um, ones wherever the bytes were greater than or equal to those in MM1, and it'll end up with um, zeros wherever that wasn't the case. Okay, here we go. This one's really ugly. Um, less than. Okay, let's just let's just move through it. So first of all, we copy the values into MM7 from MMO. Then we find uh, equal to, and stick that in MM7. Then we find greater than, and stick that in MMO. Uh, we all these two results together, and then we complement that answer. So all that's happened here is really that um, less than is exactly the same as not greater than or equal to. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I used packed and not down here to complement just to show that you can. That could have been packed XOR as well. Easy. Okay, less than or equal to. I stole this from Art of Assembly. How honest of me. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Randall Hyde. Okay, so less than or equal to is actually exactly the same as greater than with the operand swapped. Very clever. Okay, so we find greater than but we swap the operators and operands, sorry. That's exactly what I've done here. We've got movq, mm7, mm1. Um, find the greater than. Oops. Find the greater than and put that in mm7. That's the um, swapped operands version. See, we're comparing mmo to uh, mm1, but I've swapped the operands. And finally, move that answer back into uh, mmo. Okay, so let's go on to a practical example. Um, an absolute function. So all we've got here is um, something that runs through uh, an array of short integers that's count long and any values in that array that are less than zero um, we multiply by negative one. This is the absolute function. That's how you might write it out in mathematics uh, not mathematics, sorry, C++. <laughs> uh, MMX doesn't roll this way so let's have a look at how we do it in MMX. The first thing that we've got to remember, I think, I don't know if we've gone through this, but um, two's complement. Uh, x86 CPUs use two's complement to represent negative numbers, and we want to do this as opposed to multiplying. In the previous slide, we had multiply by negative one, but um, CPUs don't like multiplying. Well, they do. They do like it. They like it, but it's slow. I don't know if they like it or not. Uh, anyway, we'll use this instead. So to get the two's complement of a value. Uh, you complement all of the bits and you add one. You can try it if you like. If you've never seen it before. Yeah. Complement the bits of, of an integer, say four, and add one. And the computer will say that you've got negative four. Good stuff. Okay, so we got an example over here. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through this assembly quite slowly just so that any folks that want to can type it out. But we're only going to look at the main loop in detail. Um, residuals here, what I mean by residuals is just the um, extra short integers that we have to absolute that MMX can't take care of because MMX takes care of four integers at once, four short ints at once. So um, yeah, if the numbers that they give us isn't divisible by four, then uh, we might have some residuals that we can't deal with using MMX. Anyway. That's that bit. And you know, so that's the end of the actual code. Now let's have a look in detail at the main loop. Okay, here's my microscope. So I've got over here uh, the code set up. This arrow here is pointing to the line that we're executing. And over here is the registers that I'm using. Uh, RCX is pointing to uh, the array of shorts that we were given. Um, EDX is the count as per usual. 
and the other registers are set up like this. So these are the MMX registers that I'm using. MM0 has garbage, I don't care what it's got in. MM1 has garbage, I don't care what it's got in. MM4 I've set to 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, that's actually the value 1, that's not um, that's not all 1's. That's just 1, oh my gosh. Okay, so this one down here, MM5, uh, each short is set to 16 1's. Yeah, so F, 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 F in hexadecimal. Whereas MM4, I've set each to actually 1. Oh, no, that's probably just confusing. Anyway, MM6, I've set to all zeros, and MM7, I don't care what that's got in it. Okay, so the first instruction, MOV, Q, MMO, I should go through actually um, what we're going to do here. In order to find the absolute values, um, all, all that I do is um, find any positive values and store those in MMO. Then any values that were negative, um, we complement, and then we all those two values together. So we end up with um, everything in MMO, uh, the positive values and the negative values, but the negative ones will be uh, yeah complemented. Two is complemented, I should say. Anyway, the first instruction, MM5 wasn't supposed to go blank then. That's a problem with this animation. It's not my fault. Anyway, uh, the first instruction moves four words from the array. Uh, RCX is pointing to into MMO. So this is just an example. 120, negative 18, 44, and negative 4. So we have to split those up. We have to split up the positive and negative values. We want to uh, complement the negative values, but we don't want to complement the positive values. So yeah, the rest of it is pretty much doing exactly that. Okay, the next instruction, mov q mm1 mmo. Um, yeah, just ignore that one down there. That wasn't supposed to change. But this next next instruction just makes a copy of exactly those values and we store it in MM1. So MM5 wasn't supposed to change then. Congratulations, Open Office Impress. Anyway, um, packed compare greater than MMO and 6. Okay, so MM6 had all zeros here. Just ignore that equals, that's supposed to be a greater than. But all I've done here is um, performed a comparison for greater than 0 and stored the results in MMO. So the only ones that are greater than 0 are the positive integers. That's 120 and 44. So this is what we get. Zeros wherever there was a negative number, and FFFF wherever there was a positive number. Um, yeah, we would have gotten um, zeros for zero as well, um, but it doesn't end up mattering. Good. Mov Q MM7 MMO. So we want to store this answer into MM7. There he goes down there. And the next instruction, um, packed and MMO MM1, that just gets these positive values here, the 44 and the 120, and puts them back into MMO. MMO is going to be our final answer. So, yeah, if we and the mask that this packed comparison for greater than words gave us, um, we'll end up with that. There we go. So the positive values are now in there final resting place, 44 and 120. Now what we've got to deal with is the negative values. This is the negative 4 and the negative 18. So we do this by, um, first of all, complementing MM7. So MM7 had the mask that MMO had from the greater than. We want to complement that. So there we go. We end up with that. Now MM7 has FFFF wherever there was negative values which was the negative 4 and the negative 18. The next thing that we do is AND the negative 4 and the negative 18 with those masks. And there we go. And now we go about 2's complementing the values in MM7. Uh, do note that 2's complementing 0 gives you exactly as you'd expect, 0 again. So negative 0 and 0 are the same thing. And uh, yeah, it just works out. Beautiful. All right. Uh, XOR MM7 with MM5. This is the first step of twos complementing. This is um, flipping all of the bits, or complementing, ones complementing, they call it. Okay, so that will result in 3, FFFF, 17, FFFF. So we get these Fs wherever we had zeros. But as soon as we add 1, which is why I set up MM4 with all ones, those Fs overflow to 0 again. 
but the negative numbers, more importantly, the negative numbers become exactly what we want. 4 and 18 instead of negative 4 and negative 18. Alrighty. And finally, we can or that result there, the 4 and the 18, with our original uh, positive numbers, the 44 and the 120, and we end up with our final answer, which we can then um, mob Q back into the array RCX is pointing to, and we can add to RCX so that it's pointing to the next values for MMX to uh, deal with, and finally decrement EDX to not zero the main loop, and it's the bottom of the loop. Okay, so that was pretty good. That's just one way to absolute. That's a pretty quick way. I'm sure there's faster ways, but I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, anyway, so what I want to say is that we spent a long time looking at MMX, but um, we've actually, in fact, been sort of looking at uh, SSE as well, the streaming SIMD extensions. Um, we've been looking, or sorry, what we're going to do now is port exactly that algorithm over to SSE2. Now, we're going to use SSE2 because uh, SSE1 doesn't deal with integers. That's SSE2 that does. So we'll go through the minor changes in order to port, and we'll have um, code that runs approximately twice as fast. SSE uh, handles eight words at once instead of uh, four that MMX handles. It's much, much more flexible. Anyway, this is how you port it. So SSE uses um, XMM registers, not just MM. So it oh my gosh. Gosh, 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 I just realized how confusing it is. Okay, if you put an X in front of the MMX register names, you'll convert them all to the 128-bit SSE registers. Okay, so instead of MM0, you use XMM0. Instead of MM1, you use XMM1. Okay, Shift EDX3, this is right at the top. We'll have a look at some code in a minute, if this is confusing. Or we'll have a look at the ported code. Uh, Shift EDX3 instead of 2. So we want to divide the count by 8 instead of 4, since SSE can deal with 8 words at once, instead of MMX's rather lazy 4. Um, down in the residuals part, we want to AND EAX with 3 ones in binary, instead of 2 ones in binary. Once again, this is just uh, comes about because uh, SSE can deal with so many words at once. Um, we want to add 16 to RCX at the bottom of the main loop instead of 8. Uh, since uh, SSE deals with 16 bytes at once, or yeah, uh, change all of the pointer references from Q word pointers or quad word pointers to XMM word PTR. So this is um, SSE pointers or 128 bit pointers. Um, change MOV Q to MOV DQU. We'll go through these moves in um, a bit more detail later. But um, yeah, MOV Q doesn't work in SSE anymore. Well, it does, but. Yeah, this is how you move 128-bit values around. Um, wherever they both reference mem memory and change mov Q to mov DQA, wherever both operands are SSE registers. Yeah, so there's a couple of mobs here that we have to change. And finally, remove the exit multimedia state instruction. So um, SSE doesn't doesn't need the uh, exit multimedia state instruction. So we can get rid of that. Let's just escape out of that and go back to Visual Studio. I scroll down here. Okay, here's the ported code. I'll just scroll through this slowly as well in case anyone wants to write it out. Um, so there's the mov Q or mov DQUs. There's all of the X's in front of the register names. Um, add RCX16. Here's your XMM word pointer, etc., etc., etc. The three ones there, don't forget that. It'll be three ones in binary instead of two. And down here, there's no exit multimedia state. Okay, so this second algorithm here, or well, the second uh, the second code here, should go about twice as fast. It, it won't, but it, it goes a lot faster than the MMX version. This is the SSE2 version. We should check if our CPU is SSE2 capable as well, but can't be bothered. We'll do it another time. Okay. So why would you ever use MMX over SSE2 when SSE2 takes... Um, eight words at once instead of four. These are just a couple of reasons that I thought of. There's probably more, pipelining, etc, etc. Anyway, um, if you're optimizing for size, the MMX registers are smaller. They're three bytes long versus SSE instructions, which are usually four bytes long. So if you want to make your code really small and compact, you might use MMX. 
Um, you might just need additional register space on the CPU. Uh, MMX gives us an additional 8 by 64 bits of register space, so maybe you want to store values in there. Um, the other reason I thought of was that maybe SSE2 is not supported by the CPU. That's pretty unlikely nowadays with uh, these x86 CPUs, but it's possible. Maybe uh, if you're programming particularly, I think, low-powered things, maybe the via Eden, although I think, I think they've got SSE anyway. Okay, so actually, usually, usually you wouldn't use MMX. Uh, it's a really good intro to SIMD, and that's sort of why I've used it. Um, and also, most of the instructions from MMX still work in SSE, so yeah, we've sort of been learning SSE too as well as MMX this whole time. Um, yeah, usually you use SSE in addition to the SSE. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a a really good point. The SSE is much, much more flexible. Streaming SIMD extensions um, deal with floating point as well as integers. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, thank you for listening.